Wednesday morning on BBC Hereford and Worcester with Malcolm Boyden, that's me. We're here until one o'clock. Some fantastic stories coming up, including this one. I covered my body in crisps. We meet the Worcestershire model who's found a novel way to hit back at the body shamers. Her name's Ishkra. She's fantastic. She's coming next. So, with more than one and a half million followers on Instagram and tens of thousands on Twitter, Ishkra Lawrence from Worcestershire is fast becoming a household name. She's shot to global stardom thanks to her refusal to retouch curves in her photograph. She's a model, you see. She's 25 years old, is Ishkra, and she's a lovely girl. Now, she's hit the headlines again. She's hit back at trolls who've caught her fat with a powerful image of herself covered in crisps. We put that image, that photograph, on our Facebook page and already it's been seen by more than half a million people. If you've ever been caught fat, go and have a look at the photograph. Well, earlier on, just before the show started actually, I caught up with Ishkra Lawrence from Worcestershire and we took the story to the very beginning. Why she decided to go into modelling in the first place. I've always been a fan of dressing up. I used to dress up in my mom's heels and lipstick, and um, I loved taking photos. And my mom entered me into Eldel Search for a Supermodel when I was 13, and that's really how it all began. I got um, scouted at the finals, and I started my career. How was it in those early days for you, Ishkra? It was very difficult. I have always had a curvy figure, and every time I would go down to London, you know, and it, that would be a big deal for my family. We'd have to drive down. My hips would keep being measured, and then I found out the more I was working, doing fashion shows, I wasn't fitting into the sample size clothes. Yeah. And I actually got dropped at the age of uh, 16 because I was too curvy. 16. How did that make mm -hmm. you feel? Um, I had low self-esteem. It really hurt at that age, and I thought that I had to change my body to achieve my dreams of being a model. So it led to, you know, uh, diets and extreme exercise, and it wasn't very healthy. Sounds awful. How bad did it get for you, Ishkra? Yeah, I mean, I remember looking at myself in the mirror and literally trying to Google uh, operations to make my calf smaller. Like, it was just... It, this, this basically takes over your mind and you think that your body is wrong. And I'd, I'd done a photo shoot and my forearms had been photoshopped smaller. So then I had this complex that I had big, you know, forearms. And there was all these crazy things in my head that, you know, a teenage girl should not be thinking of. So take me to the moment, if you can, when you thought to yourself, I'm not going to change me, I'm going to change them. <laughs> So it was actually, I was about 18, 19, and I heard about plus-size modelling. I went on down to an agency in London, and they were wonderful, and they seemed interested, but then they told me I was actually too small uh -huh. for plus-size. I was a UK 10, 12, and at that point in time, it, it, all the frustration of years of trying to change, all those no's, all that rejection kind of made me determined that this didn't make sense. If I was healthy um, and at this size, and there was no models at this size, then surely there's a whole bunch of women that aren't represented. And I decided to be that model to make that change and just show that there was more than one type of beauty. It wasn't just, you know, very, very skinny, or it wasn't just plus size. That there was a beautiful, diverse mix of women all in between that need to be represented. May I ask your size, Ishkra? Yeah, I'm currently a UK 14. Yes. And you look sensational on the photographs we've seen today, if I may say that to you. Thank you, thank you. Did you realise when you decided in your mind that enough was enough, you weren't going to change your body, you were going <laughs> to give up that side of it and go into the plus side, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. did you realise you'd find so much success? I had no idea. I also didn't know that it would be so fulfilling and rewarding because, wow. you know, I thought modeling and I, what I had seen so far is that it was something very shallow. And even though I enjoyed it, I enjoyed being on set, being creative, getting to travel, meet people. I had no idea that it would also challenge me mentally and I'd have this wonderful career that has stemmed from my experiences and I would end up basically using that experience to try and educate other young people so they don't have to go through what I did. And what's the reaction to you from other models? 
I think it's great. I have a lot of friends that are still straight size models. I have a lot of plus size model friends. And what I just see is that actually women do want this. They want to see diversity. They want to, you know, have other women championing themselves. I'm trying to open the doors up for other girls my size or bigger or in between that also didn't feel like they had a chance. So we all kind of are trying to break these boundaries because it also lets the other girls come up and experience this. And just all those young girls that I get direct messages from, that I speak to on social media, they're craving this. They're craving just seeing some more realness and some more diversity so they can relate to people in the media. Tell us about the crisp photo. It's <laughs> It's been splattered all over social media and the mm-hmm. tabloids. Tell us how this came to be. So... I was on a shoot in my underwear and I got a direct message off a young uh, girl who actually runs a fan page for me and she messaged me saying, I've been really upset today, I've read this nasty comment about you. So I went and found the comment and I read it and basically this guy was not just trying to upset me, he was really just saying to everyone that he thought was fat, which was obviously me or bigger that we were the reason that the NHS was messed up. And he just made all these horrible, malicious claims. And I was disappointed. I was really disappointed in humanity, to be honest. And I just thought, wow, look at all these young girls that follow me and look up to me, and they're going to be reading this. And it's going to hurt them because maybe they're not at the place where I am. So I realized this was the perfect opportunity to make an example. And I wanted to show that you can create something positive from something negative. And I wanted to do it in a jovial way because I also wanted to show, you know, what better way to stand up to bullies than making kind of fun of it, you know? If, if we take everything too seriously, everything becomes, you know, uh, something to, to be more down about. But I wanted to show that this has not affected me, it shouldn't affect you, but you can also take a stand. It's an incredible image, and I'm looking at it now, and it's you, <laughs> and it's the face on you as well, that determined face, <laughs> and your body, your curves covered in crisps. And you say, yeah. this is for anybody who's ever been called fat. That's a powerful yeah. message as well, isn't it? Thank you. Yeah, it is, and I, I really doubt you'll meet anyone, and it doesn't even have to be fat. It, that was obviously what I was trying, you know, I'd been called many a times through my teenage years in the fashion industry and still to this day by people online constantly. Um, but what it was is it, it was people have been always criticized for their bodies or their appearances. And it's kind of like, who, who cares about your opinion? You, you've never met me. I don't know you. But it's not okay to judge someone that you don't know. And... It will probably hurt some people. I'm I'm good now. I'm at a place where you could call me anything. I know sticks and stones won't break my bones. But those young girls, and I'm sure when I was 15, if he would have messaged me that then, I probably would have cried about that. Yes. We've put your picture on our Facebook page, and already it's been seen by 520,000 people, which is... Ooh. Yeah. That's quite amazing. So wherever this picture crops up, it's clearly hitting a chord with people. And that's exactly what you wanted it to do. Exactly. I wanted to... I have the visibility as a model. I have a platform. And if I can use it to try and make people feel better, if I can use it to kind of make a good example of things, I'm going to try and do that. I'm just going to try and put my best foot forward. Always crusade for the positive. And change, you know, those negative feelings that people have towards themselves because no one deserves to feel bad about themselves, especially from some opinion from an online troll that who's hiding behind a keyboard on a private account. It's just cowardice and it's not fair on, on anybody. What's next for you now? You're 25, Ishkra. Mm-hmm. You've done this and uh, I, I think the world is possibly your oyster. What's next for you? Well, a lot is happening over in the States, actually. And really this year is about speaking more, doing more um, live talks, really reaching those people that might need it. I was On Sunday I was in Philadelphia at the National Eating Disorder Awareness Walk um, where there was over 1,000, 1,500 people standing on stage, talking to them, seeing people break down, cry, come to hopefully the conclusion that I came to, that we are more than enough just as we are. And my long-term goal is to get compulsory self-care classes into schools, so that's body image and mental health, so that if they see an image of a model or a celebrity or those horrible tabloids that say, oh, look at her cellulite, instead of it making them feel 
lesser of themselves or worse, we educate them to realise that that doesn't matter and they are perfectly imperfect the way they are. They are perfectly imperfect the way they are. That's Ishkra. Ishkra Lawrence from Worcestershire talking to me earlier on. That's the girl who covered her body in crisps to hit back at the body shamers. And I think you're going to hear a lot more from that young lady. On BBC Hereford and Worcester. We continue with the top ten from when. But what was the year? The year of ABBA. Knowing me. Knowing you.